Can you hear me now? So good afternoon, everybody. I'm Iris Elert. Thank you for the invitations this year. Maybe you have an explanation for the empty room? Well, I did it when you were there. Okay. <laughs> no, but so it's not very full, not very crowded. So yes, uh, Cecile said, I'm from BSH in Germany. And um, the BSH in, in the uh, CMEMS context is a core service provider and uh, intermediate user, I would say. And my talk will include contributions from my colleagues, which I mentioned down over there. So if you have any questions concerning the figures, I will show. Just contact me after the talk and I'll provide you with the contact information. So our goal and also our entrusted task at BSH is to enhance maritime safety, security, and environmental protection and to facilitate the prevention of maritime fraud. So and under this umbrella, we are providing products uh, and services for users from tourism, fishing industry, public authorities engaged in environmental monitoring, environmental protection organizations, shipping companies, and also the general public. And during the next few minutes, I'll talk about the benefits we already have while we are using CMEMS products and data, and also about the potential we see in using CMEMS products in the future for future applications. So to pro provide relevant services, we operate a numerical model system of the North Sea and the Baltic. And this model system has a horizontal resolution in this area from 900 meter. And this area connects, obviously, the North Sea and the Baltic. So whatever happens in the North Sea uh, will affect the Baltic processes and, and vice versa. And in this area, the horizontal resolution is only five kilometers in tier two, and the vertical resolution goes from two meters to 100 meter depth. It's forced by the weather forecast from DWD. We provide ocean forecasts of uh, parameters like sea level currents, temperature, salinity, and sea ice, which itself uh, force our drift simulations and our ecosystem model for forecast the water quality parameters like nutrients, oxygen, and chlorophyll. So we use this model set up for testing and evaluating possible measures and actions also in the framework of the uh, Marine Strategy Framework Directive. And we compare impacts of various numer numerical approaches and we validate and provide required data records and information products. So now I start with the current benefits of the BSH in using CMEMS products and services. We use it for improving the forecast of water quality, for example. So everybody knows algae, and uh, it looks beautiful on this picture from space, but uh, it's not that beautiful if you are on holidays and have a beach that looks like that, or if you are heading for taking part in Olympic Games and you have to kayak through this carpet of algae. So algae are interesting for tourists and environmental protection agencies, for example, but also if temperatures rise above 20 degrees Celsius, let's say, so the growth of algae increases, Ed already mentioned a lot of those uh, things in the morning, and uh, through turbulences uh, the algae sink to the bottom and you die due to light deficiency. And the decomposition uh, processes consume oxygen, which finally leads to fish mortality, which is also important for the fishing industry. So there are some uh, users uh, who are interested in algae stuff, how they develop, how they grow, and so on. And to estimate the consequences of algae growth, we calculate, for example, among other things, the chlorophyll concentration and the oxygen concentration. And here you see two figures of our ecosystem model, where on the left-hand side is a chlorophyll concentration, and on the right-hand side, bottom oxygen concentration. And yeah, it's nice to have this model result, but uh, the question is, how do we know if our models are wrong, uh, right or wrong? <laughs> yes. 
And uh, this is where CMIMS comes into play because, for example, for the chlorophyll concentration, we use CMIMS satellite data to evaluate our model results. And you can see that the differences between the model results and the satellite measurement are quite high. So this is an example how um, important in situ observations are because in situ observations are the only measurement we could use to, to validate our satellite data and also to evaluate model results. So in situ observations are really important. And even more important uh, in situ measurements are for things like the uh, bottom oxygen concentration because it's really hard to derive them from satellite measurements. So uh, for this example, you see here um, results from our ecosystem model um, where lines show model results, dots show observations, and uh, the light blue line shows uh, measurements and model results at the surface, and dark blue um, line show model results and observations in 30 meter depth. So we can see that they are not matching everywhere. They are close to model simulations, but um, there is space for model improvements, I think. So and however, we are not the only ones providing um, the forecast for the Northwest Shelf. There are also partners, Siemens partners from Sweden, Belgium, Norway, Denmark, and the UK. And uh, this is an example showing model results for one point in the North Sea for the sea surface salinity. And you can see that the results of the model are really different. And, and here you see in situ observations in the north, at the point uh, of the North Sea buoy. And yeah, we are using a multi-model ensemble to show the users the uncertainties and the differences between uh, the forecast products of the different forecasting models. And um, one example is the monthly evaluation of multi-model ensemble forecasts of, of the sea surface temperature with CMEM satellite data, you can see on the right-hand side, where we see um, that the deviation of the multi-model ensemble forecast from satellite measurements for last month, it was, yes, it was in April, was up to one degree Celsius, whatever it means. Of course, it leaves space for model improvements. So now I only shortly show uh, where we see the potential for future applications in using CMIMS data, and these are uh, sea ice and drift simulations. As I already mentioned, uh, in addition to the numerical model system of the North Sea and the Baltic, we operate a Lagrangian drift model for oil and floating objects. And users are the operational sea level forecasting service, the central command for maritime emergencies, and the German Maritime Search and Rescue Service. And the current inputs are weather forecasts from DWD, the data archive of current sea level salinity, temperature, sea ice cover, and meteorological data. And of course, we also need tidal predictions and external waves coming in and river inputs. So for the future, one picture is miss missing, by the way. There was supposed to be one picture more. Um, yes. Um, so we would like to uh, Siemens to provide drift model results also from other regions to improve our Cecile, <laughs> you look. Um, yes, and uh, data from the Copernicus Atmosphere Service would also be valuable. So then for our sea ice model we run at BSH, uh, in general, sea ice models and ice charts need to be improved concerning the sea ice classification, ice hummocks, or dangerous ice ridging zones. Um, these are only two examples of things that happen if we have sea ice. And we do have sea ice in the Northwest Shelf Sea if air temperatures are at zero and the water temperature is at freezing point of salt water, which is minus 1.8 degree Celsius. <clears throat> so these are really dangerous things happening for shipping. If they are stuck in, stuck into the ice, it's a hard job. 
So our users are shipping companies, supply vessels for offshore platforms, uh, environmental protection organizations, and of course the BI services who try to get out most of the information they can get from satellite data or from ice observers, and then really draw by hand the lines which sea ice type we might have in the, this or that region. So in the future, there's a clear signal if we get Sentinel-3 data and we already get Sentinel-1 data. So the increasing number of CMM satellite products will help us to improve sea ice forecasts and, and also the legal advice to uh, shipping companies in the end. So summary at BSH, we describe and forecast physical and biogeochemical state variables for the Northwest Shelf. And I've tried to show you that uh, we uh, already use CMEMS data and products and that those help us to evaluate our models and to improve our forecast uh, quality for the users. And in the future, the increasing amount of CMEMS uh, satellite products will help us to improve drift simulations and the accuracy of CIS charts. And I can't get tired to mention that we need uh, in-situ observations. Thank you for your attention.